Race two of the weekend for the Volkswagen Racing Cup for 2019 here at a slightly overcast Donington Park. And we're building on what was a fantastic first race yesterday afternoon that saw plenty of drama and a race victory for Mark Wakefield, his second of the season. The cars now are already heading up onto the grid, ready for their formation lap. This grid is set by the results of race one yesterday, but a partially reverse group of the top six in reverse order. You can see track temperature 23 degrees, a little bit cooler at 18.9 degrees in the air, but crucially 69% humidity, which means that there's a higher chance of rain. There were a few spots at the end of the previous race we just had, and there are clouds hanging in the air. So there's always the chance in this 20 minute encounter that we could see a little bit of precipitation that could shake things up a little bit more. Scott Woodward's here in the commentary box as the cars head off onto the form lap here for race number two as you can see at the front of the grid it is going to be as part of the reverse grid Russell Joyce will start on pole position alongside him will be Jack Depper son of championship leader Martin Depper who struggled yesterday in race one after success ballast before him all the way down to the eventual seventh place but it was an in int intriguing first race which saw Josh Coggan get away from pole position lead the first half of the race and then problems with the front end of the car a little bit of flapping bodywork on the front saw him drop down eventually finished fourth after a couple of shaky laps towards the end of the race. Here's the grid there. Russell Joyce will start from pole position alongside him, Jack Depper in the VW Scirocco. Then row two, we'll see Josh Coggan, who starts at set pole yesterday and was on course for race victory in the first half of the race, starting third alongside the first of the two Audi TT with Owen Walton. Then it's Father Simon up behind him on row three alongside yesterday's race one winner, Mark Wakefield. He's looking to make his third win of the season in this second race this afternoon. Champion Eden Martin Depper is back in seventh, but should be free of whatever balance he had yesterday. He starts alongside his first Scirocco driver, Matt Evans, and rounding out the top tiers, Rob Allen, he picked up a, a, a four-second penalty yesterday added to his race time. He starts alongside Tony Prendergast at the end of the top 10. Mark Steele is in 11th place on row six, alongside Michael Jones to complete the top 12. And then looking back towards the rest of the field, we see Richard Gilbert and Lewis Smith, who retired. He was shown as being finishing the race yesterday, but not classified for whatever reason. The reason is not clear on the results sheet, sadly. Jeff Alden had a very um, crazy front-left suspension failure right at the end of the race, means he never even made the flag. And last year's vice champion returning this weekend Rory Clark sadly retired after only just three, uh, was one lap with lots of work to do to get that car back in running order. So Russell Joyce then has the daunting task of starting from pole position, but of course some of the faster cars behind will try and push their way up through the order of course. Now obviously some of these guys were working with slightly with success balance based on the fact that they had success yesterday. But watching the cars to come through, the biggest driver I think to look for is certainly going to be Martin Depper from seventh on the grid. He should have most of that ball ballast severely removed, but it means he should be pretty quick looking to try and pick up another race victory. He currently has at the moment three race victories to his name. He's taken a race win each so far uh, by the looks of things at Alton Park, Sneston and at Silverstone. And he leads the way, he led the way coming into the weekend on drop scores. But of course, Owen Walter would have closed that in quite severely. I'm sure if that's one of his worst results of the season, he would have been allowed to drop that and put himself back up through the field. You can see the from what was it's been a slightly overcast day all day today, but the marshals have been very hardy souls out there. So thanks as ever to our, our fantastic British marshals who've been working hard all weekend to make sure that any incidents and spillages and anything else that's been causing trouble on track has been cleared up as quickly as possible. And remember, these guys are all volunteers. They all give up their free time for the sport they love. And genuinely, race meetings like this couldn't happen without them. So we give a massive thanks to them. And I think it's fair, it's fair to say, in my personal opinion, that British marshals are genuinely the best in the world. They're trained to such a high standard. They get refreshed training every single single year and they do a fantastic job to make sure events like this run like clockwork. So it looks though we have all 16 cars on the grid for this second of two 20 minute races. And of course it's uh, point scoring that you get 44 points for a victory, 40 points for second and 38 for third. And of course a fantastic mix of different cars. You've got the likes of the Volkswagen Golfs, a few Scirocco's in there. But watch out also too for the two for the very unique pair of Audi TTs in fourth and fifth run by the father and son team of Simon and Owen Walton. 
and they'll be looking to try and improve. They've got a double podium yesterday. As you say, it was Owen ahead of, a Simon ahead of Owen, I should say, uh, on that grid. But it's Mark Waitford who's doing double Gs this weekend. It, it, it made a pretty instant impact in his first TCR UK race with a podium in third place. Now he's got to try and take more success by visiting the podium with a race win in race number two. The cars are on the grid. The green flag flies and race number two of the weekend for the Volkswagen Racing Club is ready to go. It is Russell Joyce on pole, but can he hold the lead down towards turn one? Let's find out. Lights out, and we are racing at Donington Park. It's a clean start for Russell Joyce, but an equally good getaway from Jack Depper on the right screen in the black Scirocco as they head side by side down towards Redgate Corner. Jack Depper might be able to get his nose in front if he turns in towards the right-hander. Cocker tries to go with him up the inside for second place, but just about holds on. He's got the line he needs and up to second place already, so a good start from the, the second row of the grid for yesterday's pole man, Josh Coggan, trying to right the wrongs of yesterday where he lost out on the victory. But a cracking start actually from pole man Russell Joyce, taking full advantage of the reverse grid, and he holds on to the lead down towards Old Hairpin for the first time. Josh Coggan immediately putting him under pressure. Meanwhile, looking at Martin Depp, who said to watch for him from the for seventh base, and Jack Depp loses it. There's contact. He's hit one of the Audis, spinning off into the infield. Severe damage to the front of the Scirocco. We can't say exactly which one of the Waltons that is, but here's now he TT in strife. That may possibly cause a safety car. It's the number nine. It's the no, it's the of Simon Walter yesterday in second place. Simon Walter heading strife. So he's now tumbled down the order. He is certainly out of the race. Meanwhile, for the lead up on the inside into Coppice Corner goes Josh Cocker, but he can't get it done on the inside line. Martin Devon, we want straight up to third place. Rob Allen in four. And the other Audi looks as though he's hit trouble. That's the number nine. It is the number nine. He's tried to recover, but the front left suspension is severely damaged, and he will have to park that towards the edge of the circuit. Jack Depper is out of the race as well. Look to me as if possibly Jack Depper lost the back end of the car and simply speared into the side of Simon Walton's Audi. Bit of uh, bodywork flying off somebody. Well, that might be Tony Prendergast's cars that come through the complex. Someone else spinning. That was one of the JW Burr machines that went off the road up at the chicane, so a very fast and frenetic first lap in this second race for the Volkswagen Racing Cup. No sign of a safety car at the moment. That looks to me who was the number two of Richard Gilbert that went for a spin. He recovers uh, without too much dramas, but up towards the Goddard's hairpin for the end of the first lap. And impressively, Russell Joyce has not relinquished the lead, but Josh Coggan is putting him under substantial uh, pressure. I think it might have been the six of Michael Jones that had the spin, so he's going to try and make his way up through the field as much as he can. But Russell Joyce leads the way then. Second place now for Josh Coggan. Third for Marty Depp, but now under pressure from Rob Allen in fourth place. Down to fifth now from the start is now Owen Waltz. Now that Simon is out of the equation thanks to his retirement on the first lap. Mark Wakefield, though, in sixth position with the success pass he'll be carrying, will be out of the race. Down towards the right hand of the old hairpin for the second time. Head through now on the second on the second lap as they come through. Here's a replay of what happened. Jack Depper losing it big time, sideways through the old hairpin, trying to gather it together. He looks as though he kept his foot firmly planted on the accelerator. The car speared its way across on back onto the circuit into the hapless Simon Walton, who simply really had nowhere to go. And I think possibly the stewards may look at that on the front of Jack Depper, not but taking his foot out of it after the spin. But of course, in the front wheel drive post, if you boot the throttle and try to make it through, as Josh Cox is trying to make his way through, but they are racing towards the safety car boards. They all close up. Now, Josh Coggan has to back out of that because he may not have got the move done before they got to the safety car boards and flags, which he hadn't. So he backs in behind Russell Joyce, and now the cars will start to back off a little bit here to give them a chance to keep the temperature and pressures up in the tyres and brakes. So a very action-packed start as we see Jack Davis rather sorry-looking Sirocco after that incident parked up on the inside, and that means that the snatch vehicle in the back will have to, have to make do with heading across to retrieve the stricken Scirocco. But quick response to the course from the marshals and recovery teams to get that car out of there. Um, impressive talking point that Russell Joyce from pole position did incredibly well to hold off the likes of Josh Coggan. Nearly lost the lead before we got to the safety car boards and flags. But credit where credit's due for the opening two laps, he was able to hold back some of the championship contenders. Uh, Josh Coggan redeeming himself mostly for his dramas at the end of uh, race one so far. Great start for Martin Depp as we expected up to third place. Rob Allen has also had a good run so far. He was very strong in qualifying and in that first race before he went wide at one point later in the race. And Owen Walton, of course, second in the championship. Behind his main championship rival, Martin Depp, he's got time to try and make the points of the best he can. Meanwhile, sixth place man, Mark Wakefield, is further back in the order than he would like. Let's, so as the Jack Depper car is pulled away, let's see if we can possibly have a look at some of the action from the start. Here's the start again for benefit of those who possibly want to see exactly what happens. So a clean getaway 
fairly decent jump initially from Jack Depper, but then seemed to stumble in the second phase at the start. He managed to pull himself alongside on the outside run towards Redgate Corner, but Josh Cochran was already up alongside. He managed to hold the inside line and take the position and move up into second place. This is the replay again. Jack Depper on possibly cold tyres, losing the back end severely, kept his foot in and whacked straight into the side of Simon Walton. He will possibly feel hard done by there as the Audi TT slid to a halt with severely damaged front left suspension. This is what happened, we believe, to Michael Jones. Big spin for Michael. But he manages to recover it without any damage. And so he will try and get himself to the back of the field, which has been be the benefit, of course, of the safety car, which sees the field bunched up behind it, up at Coppice Corner. But just a recap of where we are order-wise. Then Russell Joyce leads the way from Josh Colgan in second place. Martin Depper, championship leader in third. From Rob Allen in fourth position. Owen Walton sits in fifth place. From yesterday's race winner, Mark Wakefield, back in sixth. Tony Prendergast is in seventh place from the number seven of Matt Evans. And then it's Mark Steele and the 52 of Rory Clark from the back of the grid, having a much better time this time by race one. He did not race one when he retired early on. As the lights are already out on the safety car, which means that uh, Jack Depper, who is now resting on top of the tyre barrier, I'm wondering what could have been from this race. This now means that the race will get underway fairly swiftly. It means now that as the BMW safety car speeds its way back towards pit lane, Russell Joyce now has to perform a safety car restart, which I'm suspecting possibly he may never have done in his racing life. It means that he becomes a safety car. In fact, he has to choose exactly when he wants to pull the pin and get this race restarted. He has one of two things to try and do, to either try and get a good enough restart to surprise everyone or get away as quick as he can and hope that no one else goes with him on the run towards the final couple of corners. Weaving from side to side to get the heat back into the tyres. Try and pull a move as best as he can. Not yet, not yet. Not yet coming into Goddard's, just trying to back them up as much as he can. He might try and fire it off the final corner before they get the green flags, which he does now boost the throttle, and away he goes. He tries to sharpen off the exit of the corner as he comes back onto the pit straight, so they take the green flag, and racing is back underway here. Cochran has just about gone with him here, but a challenge for third place now with Rob Allen on the outside line of Martin Depper down towards Redgate Corner. Might try to try and sweep across to get the apex for turn one, but Martin Depper's got his car firmly on the inside line and doesn't relinquish the place. So Depp holds on to third. Meanwhile, Josh Cochran trying to pull himself alongside. Race leader Russell Joyce with a good enough exit from Redgate. And swing down the credit curve. a big wiggle for Josh Cochran as he got a bit of oversteer in the middle of the second part of the credit curve. That's the worst possible scenario. But now most tries to get himself back as Russell Joyce gets shaky on the exit of the old hairpin. Martin Depper gets himself into the mix as well. It's now three, almost four for the lead. They're almost three abreast. Martin Depper trying to shoot the gap. But he has to slot in behind Russell Joyce as Cochran looks up the inside line into McLean. There's a tag on the rear quarter from Cochran on Joyce. Around the outside is Martin Depper. They are three abreast on the exit. Up towards Coppice Corner. Depper could get them both on the run towards the right-hander. It is still three abreast. Cochran in the middle. Depper on the outside. Joyce on the inside line. And somehow, still, Russell Joyce has come out on top. Look at the cars behind him now. Owen Walters in the mix. So is Rob Allen. And so is yesterday's race winner, Mark Wakefield. It is six of them for the lead down towards the S's. As Russell Joyce blocks the gap in the middle of the road. Side by side for second up. The inside goes Martin Depp into the chicane. Russ Joyce cuts the chicane as he goes across towards the Melbourne Loop. All action stations here on the restart. Someone getting very sideways on the exit. And now Martin Depp has somehow found his way through. So Russell Joyce possibly backed off to possibly um, not get to receive a penalty as a result of that. Mark Wakefield looking to the outside now for fifth place on Owen Walton. Well, on the restart, it's all kicked off here in the BW Cup for race number two, but Martin Depp, a championship leader, finds himself back in the race lead here. As now Russell Joyce holds on to second place. Josh Cock must be rattling the back of that bear by going, get out of my way, I want to leave this race and redeem myself for race one. But he won't do it, especially with Rob Allen. Now looking to the outside line of Josh Cock and this time for third place. Meanwhile, for P5, we see Owen Walton looking to the outside of Mark Wakefield. Depper takes a slightly wider the racing line into Redgate Corner. Russell George is slightly tighter on the inside. Allen now under threat from both Walton and also Mark Wakefield. They're side by side fifth position. Now getting into seventh place just behind him is Tony Prendergast. And just behind them also, Rory Clark has set the fastest lap of the race. A 145.747 could be eight for them as Russell Joyce gets sideways on the exit of Ronald Hairpin. Almost a resemblance to what happened to Jack Depper. He's onto the grass, keeps his foot in. Didn't realize this is rally cross rather than the BW Cup. He bounced his way back onto the circuit, but the early race leader is tumbling down the order, possibly with problems as a result of that. Now Josh Cogner's up to second place. Rob Allen, who's an independent, by the way, he's up to third. Fourth place for Owen Walton, past now 
pair. Mark Wakeford into fifth position, and they're all stacking up behind them, because look at sixth place for Tony Prendergast, seventh for Ruby Clark, and eighth for Matt Evans. Here's a replay of what happened to Russell Joyce. Again, way too hot into old hairpin. Big sideways moment, a la Jack Depper. This time, managed to slot back in just in front of Mark Wakeford, who I think just about stood on the anchors to make sure he didn't make contact. Bounce his way back onto the circuit, but he loses several places. We'll see exactly where he ends up when they come across the line once again. Back down to looks like 11th place as a result of that. As they come back into the Melbourne loop once again, this is on lap five. We just about hit half distance. We're almost out of breath at this one, and no wonder. We've got plenty of the, uh, that's more battling for some of the JW Bird Scirocco's. That's the scrap going on between Prendergast and Evans. That's happening over what looks to be seventh and eighth place as they head into the Goddard's hairpin now at the end of lap five. And it is now Martin Depper that leads the way. Russell Joyce in second, followed by Rob Allen in third. Walton up to fourth now. Top three breaking away already. They're covered now by just less than a second now, 0.8. They come back into Redgate. Well, the fight for fourth is still brewing here. Four of them for P4 between Walton, Wakefield, Clark and Prendergast. But Martin Depper really trying to redeem himself after being so heavily laden down with ballast after his success at Silverstone. Get himself back into the lead of the race where he wants to be, but he also gets sideways on the exit of old, old hairpin. So that's three of them now in a leading position or somewhere towards the front, getting very sideways through that right hander. And now we see Lewis Smith in the pit lane. He was for some reason not classified in race one yesterday, but problems with the 24 car season back in the pit lane, so he may not score any points unless the team can get him back out there. The top three working together almost through Coppers Corner. They start to extend the gap to this fight for four. Owen Walton upholding on us for family in the Audi. Now we see for second place, Josh Coggan drops behind to second place. Is that either a missed gear? Is that more problems as a legacy of what happened yesterday? And he seems to have easily dropped behind second place to Rob Allen now as we head up through the S's now for what is now the sixth time. Fastest lap of the race last time by went to Josh Coggan. It's now 143.894. Big bump of the curve there. That was for Mark Evans in the seven, Matt Evans in the seven. But he holds station in eighth position. And now throwing up the inside now for Ruby Clark. Remember, this is from the back of the grid from Ruby Clark. A fantastic drive for last year's vice champion. He's now sent it up the inside from practically nowhere. He's torn past Prendergast and Wakefield and now Owen Walton up into what is now looking to be fourth position. Now he's going for fourth up the inside of Walton as the Audi tries to go back down the outside line. And they sprint up the pit straight once again at the end of lap uh, six. Another new fast snap of the race, this time for Rob Allen, who's on the rear bumper of Matt Depper now. We've got less than eight minutes to go in the second race of the weekend for the Volkswagen Racing Cup. That always delivers fantastic racing. The party reverse grid certainly bringing plenty of action. As we head down the crane of curves, and Rob Allen is really applying the pressure to the back bumper of Martin Depper as they come back down through the crane of curves. Now, can we all get through Old Head without somebody getting sideways? So far, so good for the top two. And Josh Coggan hasn't lost, he, he's roughly back up to speed, but he hasn't lost so much time to the cars in front. He's more losing time and falling back into the clutches of Rory Clark and co behind in fourth place. But he has come up through McLean's now for the seventh time. Coggan just holding station in third, but he is being caught slowly but surely by Rory Clark and co behind him. There is Rob Allen, one of the most impressive independent drivers in the field this season and doing a cracking job to keep pace with Martin Depper, of course, who's a former uh, touring car star, reverted back to the VW Cup. Of course, shares the same stable with his son, Jack, who had an early exit, sadly. I'm not sure if there's any rain in the air, but it's very overcast. As Josh Coggan, again, very wide across the kerbs. That won't do the car too, too good as he goes towards the Melbourne Loop, which sees Rob Allen again to the outside line, into the hairpin. Tries to get the undercut on the exit, but there just isn't any room through. He's trying to get the power down. Coggan again, wide through the Melbourne loop, now under threat from Rory Clark, who could be on for a podium place, as Alam again trying to get that outside line to get the switch back on the exit of Goddard to put himself alongside. Trouble is, he'll be on the outside line for Redgate Corner if he can put himself alongside. It is Scirocco on the left versus Golf on the right. And Alam is pulling himself alongside here, down towards Redgate Corner. He could be going for the lead. Can he switch in front? The answer is no because Depper has the inside line. So again, Alan Jones gets another cut back on the exit, but still cannot find the way through. Six minutes to go in this second race of the weekend for the BW Cup, and he gets another new fastest lap of the race. Rob Allen, he dips into the 142s, 142, 142.934. These BWs rock on their suspension through the crane occurs. Meanwhile, for third place, slightly way with Josh Coggan having to take two bites of the cherry at the apex in the golf through Old Hairpin. He's coming under severe pressure 
for third place, as is, of course, Depper from Allen. Two very different experience levels, but two cars very evenly matched as they head through the claims once again. There's the fight for third. Coffin's car probably not all that comfortable with how it's set up at the moment. He had these problems with race one, remember, yesterday, if you were watching, led for most of the race and had some problems on the front end and dropped all the way back. So whenever the issue is for Josh Coggan, not all is well, I think, with that number 12 golf as we head down towards the chicane. And again, Alan darting this way and that. He's trying to force a mistake, saying, come on, Martin, get out of my way. Either quit, try and pull the way or just let me through. But I'm sure that Martin Depp, with all his experience, is not going to let him have it that easy. So Rob says, well, if you're going to play that hardball, I'll try a long way around if you don't mind. Back into the braking zone. And again, Depp is so good at that health on that inside line. Still can't find a way through. Rory Clark now looking for a switch back move of his own on the exit. And yet again, side by side into the hairpin. Martin Deffer, it must be a master hole in the, the inside line to defend the place. Just showing him the edge of the road on the exit. Rob Allen puts the power back down to hold on to second place. Now he pulled himself alongside last time by. He's not close enough this time. Unless he can make a switch back move, which he does look into the inside, try and force a mistake from Depper. Still no way through, but Rob Allen is absolutely determined to make this move here. Now there are some spots of rain on the camera and on the commentary box window here, so there is a little bit of rain falling. Now who's this going to benefit, of course? It's on a slightly slick track we're getting here on slick tyres. Are we going to see more moments into the old hairpin? Let's wait and see. Into the right hand at the bottom of the hill they go. Still Depper from Allen, the top two breaking away. The gap between second and third now is roughly around four seconds. So these two are sort of, whilst battling, still inadvertently working together to pull this gap out to the cars behind in the separate fight for third. Just looking back down through the order, still with, I think, Josh Cogan in third. Ruby Clark is in fourth position. Owen Walter fifth, and yesterday's race winner, Mark Waitman still in sixth. But look at the gap of a fourth, third place now, four of them all together. And because Rory Clark is being held up here, we see Mark Wakefield going up the inside of Owen Walton, stealing fifth position away. Because Josh Cogley is almost holding him up, or oh, I said that, for, uh, must have spoken too soon, because through it goes uh, both Clark and Wakefield and also Owen jo Walton. I think there's possible problems now for Josh Cogley. It must be a gearbox problem or a power delivery issue of some kind because he struggled to get drive off the corner and has dropped back now also behind Tony Prendergast. So again, all is not well with the golf as the lead has come back into the hairpin still. No change in the order between Depper and Cogger. But you have to say, for third place now, Rory Clark, from the back of the grid, there's a reason why he was vice champion last year. As again, finally, this time, Rob Allen gets the move done on the outside line, but I may have spoken too soon. He goes too deep into Goddard's hairpin, and we're almost back where we started. However, this time, Rob Allen is in prime position. He's on the inside line. He's side by side with Depper on the run down the Redgate corner. Finally, he could be in the prime position to make the move. Up towards the right-hander, under brakes, and at last, Rob Allen has finally prized the door open, and he makes the move stick on Martin Depper, unless Depper can put himself alongside again. Rob Allen must be thinking, what do I have to do to get rid of Martin Depper? And the answer is, well, hasn't found it yet, but Martin Depper, through the credit curves, rather impressively, fires his way back past, and we're back to square one once again with two and a half minutes to go. So, Allen, Depper from Allen this time, Scirocco versus Gold, they go through Starkeys. Back in the back of the third place, Rory Clark will have Mark Wakefield on his tail now that he's disposed of Owen Walton. And Tony Prendergast having a slightly quieter race, but he's now back in sixth position. Josh Coggan appears to still be circulating in seventh place. He hasn't dropped back too much further. But he has lost a stanchion. In fact, he's going to possibly be passed by Matt Evans by not much longer. It's looking, to round, looking round the outside line goes Mark Wakefield to take, make a move on Rory Clark for third place. Lead his head back into the chicane. What's well, been a fantastic duel between these two. Oh, lots of curve taken as Martin Depper rocked over the second part of the chicane. That's how much he's pushing to try and hold on to this race victory. And Rob Allen again looking to the outside, trying to capitalise on that small lapse in concentration, that small mistake from Martin Depper. Experienced as he is, even the most experienced hands can make mistakes here in this championship. As they make the sprint up the hill now. We're going to get one more time around here. As up the inside line again goes Rob Allen. And I think Martin Depp will think, OK, you have the inside line. I'll try and get you back on the exit. But that strategy hasn't quite worked because Rob Allen has covered him off on the, on the apex and now holds the leads to come across the line to start the last lap here at Donington Park of the weekend for the Volkswagen Racing Cup. Rob Allen now has to hold on for one more tour for Donington Park Grand Prix circuit to pick up a race victory ahead of championship leader Martin Depper. But that is easier said than done. It was 0.2 of a second across the line between the pair of them as they head down the Craner curves for the final time. Ruby Clark still holds station in third place, Wakefield still fourth. 
Walter in fifth and Prendergast in sixth. Josh Clark will back down seventh. Small little lock up there from Alam and Devon might try to capitalise on that. On the sprint three, Starkey's he's got the outside line, but Alam might try and cover him off. He's showing the edge of the road, but there's just about enough of a Scirocco size gap to go up the inside line for McLean's. Depp has got his nose in front and gets back into the lead. It's a fantastic race on scrap that we've had between the pair of them, but it's not over yet. There's still half a lap to go. Alam again, back to the outside line. He may look to the outside if he's brave enough. Has to grip on the outside. He may go for it on the racing line. But Depp again gets the better drive off the corner and holds on to the place. They're side by side again. It's a drag race as they sprint down towards the chicane for the final time. And Alan just about gets his nose in front. Depper thinks, right, I'll sit back here for the moment, try and get the run off the corner, and, and try and make a move either at Melbourne or down towards Goddard. The clock has hit zero. It's either now or never. Either Alan or Depper will win this race. The question is, in which order will they cross the line? Into the hairpin for the final time. Alan defends. Depper will look for the switch back on the exit, but Alan parks it nicely on the exit of the corner and just about holds on. There's one final chance here for Depper, who is looking to the inside, but he's too far back into Goddard's for the final time in what's been a sensational second race in the battle up at the front. But Martin Depp has run out of chances and it will be Rob Allen who will sprint to the chequered flag and take a brilliant victory in race two for the Volkswagen Racing Cup. Second place goes to the points leader Martin Depper for third place from the back of the grid, a delighted Rory Clark. Fourth place for Mark Wakefield and on the line is a drag race between Owen Walton and Tony Prendergast and Walton got it by 42 one thousandths of a second. Josh Cochran with more problems in that car, finishing a lowly seventh, eighth place for Evans. And pole sitter Russell Joyce, after all his antics, ends up in ninth place ahead of Mark Steele in P10. In what was a breathtaking race, certainly for me. But what a fantastic effort that was. A sensational race-long duel between these two at the front of the field. But Rob Allen, the independent runner with Illumi Motorsport, is your race winner, but he had to work incredibly hard for that because Martin Depper did not let him have that easy for one single moment. He's earned every single moment of that victory. I'm sure Martin Depper and co will certainly appreciate his efforts and what was a very hard fought effort. Of course, credit has to go as well to Rory Clark in comparison yesterday, not even completing really one lap in race one, half starting with the back of the grid. He put in a vice champion light drive to pick up third place. That's what possibly could have been for Jack Depper after a collision on the first lap between himself and Simon Walton, putting both cars out as we head down towards the end of that lap. Of course, next time by the two Brands Hatch rounds at Indy and the Grand Prix circuit, and they'll be back here in September for the season finale. Will we get more luck racing like that in a few months' time? Here's confirmation of the result of that brilliant second race. Rob Allen wins by 0.8 of a second from Martin Depper. Rory Clark from the back of the grid to third, just beating Mark Wakefield by half a second, who is in fourth place. Fifth place for Owen Walton, fifth for Tony Prendergast, sixth, sixth, uh, seventh for Josh Coggan, eighth for Matt Evans, ninth for Russell Joyce, and tenth for Mark Steele with Gilbert, Olden, Jones, Smith, and then Jack Depper, uh, a non-finisher, as was Simon Walton at the end of that race and uh, an incredible battle all the way through. It looks though, last in the back, we saw somebody going off in the background by the looks of it. And that was the one with that, and it's Jeff Alden. So we saw him have problems in at the end of race one with a front left suspension collapse. Now he's caught off on the cool down lap down at the old hairpin, whether that's a result of the rain that's falling now on the circuit. We'll have to wait and see. It's never a dull race when Jeff Alden's around. And I think that's for sure in the BW Racing Cup, but the cars make their way Back to Park Ferme after a fantastic second race, but saw plenty of drama and plenty of action all the way through from start to finish. And uh, an incredible job. Here's some of the highlights of what was an unbelievable second race from the pole position. Russell Joyce did get a pretty good start, but Jack Depper tried to go along with him on the sprint down towards turn one. It was E.U. Stevens on the run into Redgate Corner with Josh Coggan finding a way up the inside for second place. Depper couldn't cover him off quick enough and Coggan was up into P2 on the exit of Redgate run through the Crown of Cups. Then one of the key moments in the race, Jack Depper with a big sideways moment coming back onto the circuit, clatters into the side of Simon Walton and both cars are out on the spot even though Simon Walton did try and recover that car as best he could afterwards. Then a fantastic race long battle between Rob Allen and Martin Depper. Initial attempt from Rob Allen saw him lose out on the exit being too ambitious into the Goddard hairpin but this is one of the key passes he made. Depper managed to force his way back up the inside line in a fantastic back and forth battle with several changes in position. But this was the final move that made it then into the chicane for Rob Allen and he held on through the final lap into the final corner to take the victory. Will it be the same at Brands Hatch? Wait and see. But join us next time for more action from the Maximum Group Volkswagen Racing Cup.